Ideally, we choose them for the principles of recovery we see at work in their lives. We encourage our trusted servants to remain open to new ideas, to become knowledgeable about all aspects of service in NAS, and to continue to seek personal recovery. All of these attributes are essential to their ability to serve as well. Applying Spiritual Principles We noted earlier in this chapter that personal service arises from the practice of principles. By applying these principles, we learn to seek direction. We talk to our sponsor, share with our na. 63. Friends, and listen for a higher power's guidance. Some of the principles that seem to be important in tradition to include surrender, faith, humility, open-mindedness, integrity, and anonymity. We begin with surrender to our ultimate authority, the God of our understanding, with whom we have developed a personal relationship. In this case, we surrender to the direction of that higher power as it is revealed in our group conscience. We renew our commitment to the common welfare of now when we place the needs of the fellowship ahead of our own desires. Faith is our reliance on a loving higher power put into action. The application of this spiritual principle lets us surrender to the group conscience with hope instead of fear. It is a constant reminder that our direction comes from a power greater than our own. Faith demands courage, since we often practice an active demonstration of faith in spite of our anxiety. Our faith is strengthened through the experience of seeing a loving higher power work in our fellowship. Humility in practice is the honest assessment of our strengths and weaknesses. That kind of assessment is a necessary ingredient in our willingness to surrender. Humility prepares us to set aside our personal wishes so that we can effectively serve our fellowship. We look to humility, first, to remind us that we aren't personally capable of guiding the affairs of Narcotics Anonymous. We are reminded of our source of strength, a loving higher power. By practicing humility in our efforts to serve, we make room for open-mindedness. We remember that, just as we need the experience of other addicts to recover, so do we need their direction and ideas in order to serve. We learn to actively cultivate our listening skills, using our ears more than our mouths in conversation. When we are open-minded, we hear and accept solutions offered by others in the development of truth conscience. Application of this principle teaches us to set aside our prejudices in order to work with others. By practicing open-mindedness, we nurture an attitude of goodwill toward others and become willing to serve with our common good in mind. Only with an open mind can we recognize the guidance of a loving higher power. Integrity is the consistent application of spiritual principles, no matter what the circumstances. Leaders who demonstrate this quality inspire our trust. We serve best when we display an honest respect for the trust placed in us by others. Fidelity and devotion to that trust reflect the personal integrity of our servants. When we choose members to serve us, we often look for integrity as a sign that they are trustworthy. The spiritual principle of anonymity reminds us that we are all equal in Narcotics Anonymous. No one member or group has a monopoly on the knowledge of a higher power's will. We practice anonymity by offering our love, attention, and respect to everyone, regardless of our personal feelings toward any individual. Every member has a part in the development of group conscience.
We are all equal in the expression of a conscious contact with a higher power of our understanding. 64. Tradition 2 offers guidance for our relationships with others. A loving higher power is the source of direction for Na as a whole. This higher power is also the source of the principles that we apply when we serve. We can use these principles when we see correction as individuals, groups, service boards, or committees. Service is for those we serve. Our best talent in service is the ability to reach other addicts, offer identification and welcome, greet the addict walking in the door for the first time, and help ensure that newcomers return again and again. Any one of us is capable of offering that service. With the guidance of a loving higher power, we become better able to help others. Service to the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous has its own rewards. When we practice spiritual principles in our daily lives, a stronger relationship with our higher power develops. Our relationship with our group and the fellowship grows stronger, too. Service in Na is a learning experience that allows us personal growth. We begin to look beyond our own interests, setting aside our self-centered view of life in order to better serve the whole. We benefit spiritually in return for our unselfish service. Tradition 3 65. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop using. Narcotics Anonymous offers recovery to addicts around the world. We focus on the disease of addiction rather than any particular drug. Our message is broad enough to attract addicts from any social class or nationality. When new members come to meetings, our sole interest is in their desire for freedom from active addiction and how we can be of help. The third tradition helps now offer recovery to so many addicts by freeing us from having to make judgments about prospective members. It eliminates the need for membership committees or applications. We are not asked to make decisions about anyone's fitness for recovery. Since the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop using, we as members have no reason to judge each other. Desire is not a measurable commodity. It lives in the heart of each individual member. Because we can't judge the sole requirement for membership, we are encouraged to open wide the doors of our meetings to any addict who wishes to join. We are asked to extend to others the care and concern that helps each of us find a sense of belonging. The third tradition helps not grow by encouraging us to welcome others. Membership is a personal decision reached by each individual. We can do a lot to allow addicts the freedom to make that decision and reaffirm their commitment to recovery. We can help them feel comfortable in our groups by greeting them at the door, sharing with other addicts before or after the meeting, and exchanging telephone numbers. We try to make sure that any addict who attends our meeting is not turned away. To the extent that it's possible, we choose the most accessible location for our meetings. We may choose a format that reflects an invitational tone. Most of all, we encourage every addict to keep coming back. The strength of any member's desire is not necessarily connected to any outside circumstance. What makes one addict stay clean while another returns to using? No one of us can judge who will stay to recover and who will return to active addiction. There are no guarantees based on types of drugs used or using history. We cannot predict a higher success rate for addicts of a certain age, 
Are those who use for a certain number of years? Are women over men? Or any other external factor? Just as we are not capable of measuring another's desire to stay clean, neither are we equipped to decide who should join. We are free to offer welcome instead of judgment. We look for ways to help instead of judge. Our task is to fan the flame of desire, not dampen it. Any addict who walks into a meeting, even a using addict, displays a level of willingness that cannot be discounted. While maintaining an emphasis on the importance of total abstinence, still using addicts are welcomed into our meetings with special encouragement to keep coming back. Many recovering addicts do not have access to regular meetings because of incarceration, geography, physical disability, or employment. These addicts are members in every respect as long as they have the day ire to stop using, and they are entitled to the same consideration and support as any other member. Addicts attend their first meeting for many reasons. Our motives for coming to NA aren't particularly important. The desire to stop using may not be clearly realized, it may be no more than a subtle yearning for relief from pain. But this yearning often drives us to seek solutions we might otherwise never consider. Often the experience of hearing other addicts share about. 66. Recovery will ignite the desire to stop using. Others come to a meeting, hear the message, and return to active addiction. Those who return to meetings after relapse often say their desire to stop using was born from the pain of relapse. We come to NAW for many reasons, but we stay to recover when we find and keep the desire to stop using. The group is not the jury of desire. We cannot measure or arbitrate willingness. Any addict's willingness to come to a meeting ought to be a sufficient indication of desire. It may take a while for an addict to find the desire that will keep her or him in Narcotics Anonymous. No addict should be denied an opportunity to stay long enough to develop that desire. We can nurture that desire with loving acceptance. The learning of the third tradition reflects the broad focus of our first step. It's written simply enough to include addicts of all countries and cultures, no matter what drugs they use. Before finding recovery in NA, many addicts don't think that alcohol is a problem. Others abuse prescription medication, thinking that, legal, drugs are okay. Because of the wording of this tradition, we are able to attract and welcome addicts who might think they didn't use the, right, drugs to qualify for membership in NA. Each addict should be allowed to decide if NA is the answer for him or herself. We cannot make the decision for others. Although the third tradition is written simply, we know that when it talks about a desire to stop using, it means using drugs. We understand that NA is a program of recovery for drug addicts. Although addiction takes on a broader meaning for many of us as we continue in recovery it's important to remember that we first came to NA because of our drug problems. If new members are to feel that they belong in NA, they need to hear something they can identify with. They find that identification in the fellowship of recovering addicts in Narcotics Anonymous. Many of us know when we walk into our first meeting that we're addicts. It's not something we have to decide, it's just a fact of life. Membership, however, means more than just being an addict, it means making a decision. If we identify with what we hear in NA and relate with the people we meet, we will want what NA offers. 
so long as we have a desire to stop using, we are free to make the decision to join Narcotics Anonymous. Then, once we've made that decision, we need to follow it with a commitment to the principles of Na. With that commitment, we set ourselves squarely on the road of recovery. Applying spiritual principles. The third tradition encourages freedom from judgment. It leads us on the path of service toward an attitude of helpfulness, acceptance, and unconditional love. As we've seen in the previous tradition, our path of service arises from the application of principles. Some of the principles that support this tradition include tolerance, compassion, anonymity, and humility. Tolerance reminds us that judgment is not our task. The disease of addiction does not exclude anyone. Na, likewise, cannot exclude any addict who desires to stop using. We learn to be tolerant of ad ICTS from different backgrounds than ours, remembering that we are not better than any other addict in a meeting. Addiction is a deadly disease. We know that addicts who don't find recovery can expect nothing better than jails, institutions, and death. Refusing admission to any addict, even one who comes merely out of curiosity may be a death sentence for that addict. We learn to practice tolerance of addicts who don't look like us, think like us, or share like us. We teach by example. Pressuring. 67. New members to talk or act like we do may send them back to the streets. It certainly denies them the right to recover and learn in their own way. Compassion lends kindness to all our efforts in service to others. With compassion as the foundation of our actions, we learn to support members through any difficulties they may experience. All too often, we are quick to judge the quality of another's recovery or willingness. Tradition 3 asks us to set aside our self-righteousness. Because the only requirement for membership is a quality we cannot measure, the right to judge another's desire is denied us. Our attitude ought to be one of loving acceptance toward all addicts, regardless of any other problems they may experience. Generous application of compassion is more therapeutic to the suffering addict than a free application of judgment. Humility reminds us that we are not God. We cannot predict another's readiness to hear the message. We try to remember our own fear and confusion in our first meeting. We need each other's help and encouragement, not criticism or rejection. Our awareness of our own shortcomings, exercised in humility, helps us remember this. The self-acceptance that often accompanies humility makes us reluctant to judge others harshly. Anonymity is the principle that supports the openness of our groups and our freedom to welcome everyone as equals. NA has no classes of membership and no second class members. The common denominator in NA is the disease of addiction. We are all equally subject to its devastation. We share an equal right to recovery. The practice of anonymity ensures the integrity of tradition free. In the spirit of anonymity, we remember that no individual member or group is more important than the message we carry. The single requirement for membership helps ensure that no addict need die without having a chance to recover. We celebrate our equality and the freedom we share by welcoming any addict who has the desire to stop using. Tradition 3 spells freedom for the members of NA. It sets the sole requirement for membership in the heart of each individual member. We don't have to decide for anyone else. 
We don't have to expend time and energy on deciding who should stay or who we should help. Instead, we are free to extend loving assistance to anyone who walks into a meeting desiring freedom from addiction. Tradition 4. 68. Each group should be autonomous, except in matters affecting other groups or NA as a whole. NA groups have a great deal of freedom. We've already seen in Tradition 3 that groups are free of any need to screen their members or set requirements for membership. Our NA groups are free to offer recovery to any addict. The fourth tradition enhances that freedom, allowing the rich diversity of our varied experience to help us serve. Freedom can be exhilarating. Many of us have little experience with freedom of any sort. Our lived and active addiction often seem more like slavery. When we first experience the freedom of recovery we may find it overwhelming. Through working the steps, we learn that with freedom comes responsibility. In recovery, we become responsible for ourselves. As we accept that responsibility, we see how the fourth tradition encourages us to act responsibly as groups and as a fellowship. Now groups are vehicles for the message of recovery. In the strength of the personal commitment group members make to one another, the group character forms. As this group character grows and evolves, the group finds ways in which it can do what no other group in town may be doing. The members of each group design a blueprint for meetings that reflect a particular group's personality. Group autonomy gives groups the creative freedom to find individual ways to carry the message. NA is made up of a vastly diverse assortment of addicts joined together by the strength of their mutual commitment to recovery. We speak many different languages and live in differing cultures. One type of meeting will not appeal to every addict who comes to Narcotics Anonymous. In order to reach every addict who may need our help and support the recovery of every member, groups have the freedom to vary their format and other meeting characteristics. Each group has the freedom to pursue our primary purpose in the manner it feels will work best. Every group has a niche to fill, both in the fellowship as a whole and in the local not community. As a fellowship, our ability to reach still using addicts is tied to our willingness to offer meetings that are accessible and attractive to those addicts. With the creative freedom offered by autonomy, we are encouraged to seek a particular role that meets the needs of both the NA community and our own group. We are free to make each group the very best it can be. The vitality of Narcotics Anonymous is enhanced by each group's willingness to find its niche and fill it. Creative freedom challenges the groups to be strong and responsible. Members may support many meetings with their attendance, but most make a commitment to support one group in particular. Members grow in their personal recovery when they take responsibility for their lives. In the same way, groups grow and become stronger when their members take collective responsibility for maintaining their meetings. Groups reflect the responsibility and commitment of their members. One of the most common ways in which groups express their autonomy is in the choice of meeting format. Most not communities will offer a number of different types of meetings, from speaker meetings to step studies to topic discussions or any other format or combination of formats that meets the needs of local members. Some meetings will be open to the public, while 69. Others will be for addicts only. Larger communities may offer several different types of meetings each night.
Some addicts will hear the message of recovery better in one type of meeting, while others prefer another format. And not community that offers a variety of meetings is more likely to reach a broad cross-section of addicts. In a spirit of cooperation, we try to respect the autonomy of other groups by allowing them the freedom to carry the message in whatever manner seems best to them. In the spirit of autonomy, many groups hold meetings that appeal to members with similar needs. The freedom from judgment expressed in the third tradition is aimed at helping any addict, anywhere, feel comfortable and not. No matter how a group structures its meetings, all non-groups are encouraged to keep the focus of their meetings on recovery from the disease of addiction. As long as a group observes the 12 traditions and espouses the 12 steps of NA in its meetings, it may consider them Narcotics Anonymous meetings. Sometimes it's hard to know what affects NA as a whole. The fourth tradition offers a way to balance the freedom of autonomy with our responsibility to preserve non-unity. We are challenged in Tradition 4 to apply autonomy in ways that will enhance the growth and vitality of NOS. Autonomy encourages groups to become strong and lively but also reminds them that they are a vital part of a greater whole, the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. We consider our common welfare when we make decisions in our groups. Since most groups are not directly connected with each other, we might think that whatever happens in our meetings has no effect on anyone else. When we consider who is affected by our group, we have to look at other groups, the addict yet to come, the newcomer, and the neighborhood in which we hold our meetings. We have an effect on other groups or NA as a whole if we're not recognizable as a NA meeting. It helps to remember what we needed to hear when we were new, both for recovery from drug addiction. Addicts first coming to NA often look closely for differences, hoping that somehow they won't fit in. It's not difficult to alienate and may be difficult, 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 difficult, may be 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 difficult, difficult, may be difficult, may be difficult, may be difficult, may be difficult, find meeting places. If our behavior as non-members is still destructive and selfish, we will once again have difficulty meeting openly. We help protect our reputation as a fellowship when we use our meeting facilities with respect, keeping them clean and in good repair. We should take care to act like good neighbors, conducting ourselves respectfully. Even something as simple as the name of group chooses may reflect on NA as a whole. If the public reputation of Narcotics Anonymous is somehow impaired, addicts may die. Autonomy does not relieve groups of their obligation to observe and apply the spiritual principles embodied in the traditions. Careful consideration of the group's observation of the fourth tradition often takes the form of a group inventory, helping members gauge their success at carrying the message and reaching addicts in their neighborhood. At the same time, groups can examine their part in contributing to the unity of NA as a whole. The fourth tradition guides us away from self-centeredness by giving us the freedom to act responsibly as groups. Applying Spiritual Principles 70. The fourth tradition helps groups achieve a balance between independence and responsibility. This mirrors the freedom of the individual recovering member and the responsibility which supports that freedom.